Hello, assholes. You're a freshman. One of the first things you're going to have to do in your freshman writing is, is it will be to take, uh, well, they'll talk about critical thinking in terms of persuasive arguments, the persuasion papers. Now, don't ask about what critical thinking is. They'll talk, but they don't really know. That's what this is going to be. This talk we're going to talk to you about. And tell you how to write a persuasive paper. And if you have this, you'll be able to do just about anything else, in essence, uh, for the rest of the college and the rest of your career. Because this is going to, this will tell you how to do critical thinking and the rest. Now, what I'm trying to do here is beat the geeks. The geeks will, will have the assignment. They'll have it done three weeks before it's due. And they'll have worked, you know, ever since it was assigned all the way through. So it's going to be tough to, to beat them, except that this scheme, this thing here, you'll see that easily does it. And of course, it will increase your course uh, grade. So primarily, it's going to be because you're going to understand the structure and the construction of the submission that you're going to be making. Uh, <clears throat> the assignments, there'll be a number of them, but one of them will be to critique a persuasive article. And that will have a position, it'll have some support in it, and there'll be various rhetorical techniques. Now, you're, the important piece here, the professional piece, is you've got to remember is you're critiquing the article, not the author. And it's the, author, the article's position and support, and the various effectiveness of the logos, pathos, and ethos techniques that are used. So we're going to describe a procedure here, or I'm going to describe it, that employs the processes of analysis, evaluation, synthesis, and there will be a template for doing the whole procedure of things and explains what critical thinking is and I'll tell you how to construct the template but we'll start with the template and then you'll be then we'll go backwards and show you how to, to construct it. So <clears throat> there are many types of writing assignments and one is this persuade us of paper uh, that you have to re read after or a critique of one after reading an assigned article which will be more persuasive and have a, it'll have a definite position. So they'll say, well, you, know, you have to use your critical thinking skills and all that. Uh, <clears throat> people know it when they see it, so it's like pornography, but you know, don't ask them to, to delve into it. It's a waste of time. As high school students, you've been taught their big tool is to make an outline for you to write, which sounds great. However, if you had an outline, you could just start, you could write the paper. So the problem isn't the outline, it's generating the outline. Because if you have the outline, you've already decided what you're going to say and the order in which you're going to say it. Which you can't do unless you really think about it. And that's what this template will help you do. Counterintuitively, you think from high school that the, that the teacher or the professor or the instructor, whatever it happens to be, actually cares what your position is, whether you agree or disagree with the author. They don't. In principle, they don't. <clears throat> what you're going to be graded on, in addition to your writing and you know spelling, punctuation, grammar, that sort of thing, is how well the argument is uh, generated and, and presented in the paper. So, when they, when you get stuff back that says like I used to get was um, make it clearer, rewrite this, that doesn't help a whole lot. So, but. When you see what I'm saying here, you'll see exactly what you're doing. In fact, you won't even get those kind of comments. So, <clears throat> the high school approach, and again, one of the, the problems with that is that you have to work all night. Uh, you can't stop because all the organization of the, the paper is in your head. So typically, before it's due, the freshman students pull an all-nighter. So they they read the thing and then they just start blasting away and write it up. And they're good BS artists, and so they can usually put something in. But it isn't at best it isn't as good as you could do with a little bit more effort. So their recommended approach is to do this analysis and evaluation synthesis, these processes, and essentially do the critical thinking. And um, this template I'm going to show you, it's a hierarchical arrangement of, of various things, but it allows you to do each one of these as sort of phases, where you could pause each day. So three days before it was due-ish, you could 
do the analysis. Then you could do the evaluation. Well, that would be pretty straightforward. And then you could do the writing. So you could stop. Because the template, you'll actually have three pieces of paper, three or four pieces of paper that'll have the guts of the argument on there. And <clears throat> then we'll talk about a little bit later about constructing the template. So here's, on the left-hand side, is the high school approach. You read it and collect all the things. You write the outline, and away you go. But what we're going to talk about here is a, a college approach, which I would recommend, and that is as you do this about all this analysis, evaluation, and synthesis in order to get an outline. Then you can write it style on the style, on the style and person that you're going to write, review it, spell check, and submit it. Okay? So here's the template. You're assigned a article, and that's the work product here. When you read it through, and it should be if it's well written. It'll, it'll say, here's my position, and I support this position in three categories. One, two, and three. And then there'll be another paragraph or another section in the, in the article, which we'll talk about under category one. All the various support pieces, and that's what this is here. So those will be the, the supports, that, the support that that person will have for why he thinks, why he has this position, and, and under, and the support underneath that category. You then look at that, and for each one of these, you have, whether you agree or disagree, and a counter, countervailing argument, or, or the agreement article, uh, 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 element, okay? And then eventually you get down here, and it may be that you may call it the same category or not, but nonetheless, you would have, had, you would have analyzed it, you would have evaluated it at the support level, and then you would synthesize it by having these various categories and pulling them all back together into your product, which you'll submit. And you will do each one of these on a separate sheet of paper. And the format that I'm going to suggest is, shows up here. So you, here's, the, here's just the use of the thing. You're, you run down through what I just said. And <clears throat> you can stop it and go back on this thing. And then for under category A, you'll have the various articles that the support the author has. And if you make it nice and, and uh, concise, you can, you can actually use a table like that in the report, and I'll show you. But then you, corresponding to that support, you'll have your idea of what the truth is. I disagree, and then you'll have to say what, what you disagree from. It violates the laws of physics, you know, that sort of thing. My values, whatever it happens to be. Okay? <coughs> a more elaborate one, you could look at it here. This is the same thing, article, evaluation. And it's oftentimes good to, to sort of, for each one of those um, items in here, would be to put its, its uh, importance relative to make what it, uh, how it supports the particular category. Then you should always write them in the order of highest support to lowest, like that, in, within the category or in the table. That's just a convention. Okay? So, Again, this is just describing what it is, how you go about it, uh, <clears throat> and what you can do then is you can draw a conclusion from that table, which you should do, because you're going to need that for the overall conclusion. So you'll have, in the synthesis piece, you'll have the introduction, you'll have a purpose and state your conclusion. It's not a mystery. This isn't a mystery novel, but you have to wait till the end to find out whether, what you, whether you agree or not. You'll agree or disagree, whatever it is. And then you state how you achieved that uh, agreement or not. And so you, you use this kind of process. Uh, <clears throat> and then you restate the various, in the conclusion section, you restate the, the various um, conclusions from each one of the sections, evaluation uh, sections, and you state the overall conclusion. So I agree with the article based on all the, the, the information that you just presented. Okay? So, and that's essentially what this is. I conclude, not we or anything, or it can be concluded. No, I conclude, based on the greater number of high important agreements within this category, I strongly agree with the position of the paper. So that should be in each, under each one of those tables. And then the conclusion section, based on the conclusion from each section, like conclusion A and write that out, conclusion B and write that out, my overall conclusion is I strongly agree or disagree with this article. Now, if you want to have a recommendation, like this piece of shit should never be assigned to 
to freshman students ever. All copies should be burnt. I mean, you can go. Suit yourself on that. The point here is the instructor doesn't really care about your position, but he does care that it's well and clearly supported. Okay? So here's here you might have all of this, these three sheets of paper, and then they would just be put over into an outline form, because that's essentially what you're doing it, but you're doing it in parallel, and you could stop at each point. Okay? And then again, this is a similar kind of, of uh, diagram of how you could map them into a uh, the flow, flow diagram, if you wanted to, you'd start here with the paper, you break it into the categories, and then you'd stack the pieces of paper up and then just write the whole thing into your work product. Now the point here is, is that you can stop. You can do the analysis one night, stop, come back the next night, review it, and all you got to do is, if, you, if it's electronically a format, you just extract it the pieces, appropriate pieces out and drop them into a, into a table like that, a piece of cake, and then um, just write out some brief uh, stuff, uh, you know, your, your comments on whether you agree and disagree and why, and you're all set. How would you, if you didn't have this template, how would you generate it? Well, you'd start with the end. You, gotta, you realize we need some sort of an overall conclusion to this paper. Big deal. All right, so if we're going to do that, we need to have some other conclusions. Third, the Large, the overall one is going to be based on individual ones. All right, where are we going to get those? We need them from the various categories. Where are we going to get those conclusions? We've got to do some evaluations under each one of those categories. Where are we going to do those evaluations? We're going to get them from the article, the, the various facts and the rest of it, and, the, and then you, you work right back up, and that constructs the temp template. So the template then is effectively a plan for performing this critique. And the way of generating was this plan backwards, work forward, which is this piece down here. And that is a technique that is applicable to many, many work assignments. It doesn't just apply here when you're going to plan a project or, or a larger paper or a term paper or a thesis or anything. That's a very good scheme to, to use to get some idea of what, what you need to do. Okay. <clears throat> oh. So, the closing comments, are you going to write an outline for the future paper? Probably not. You're going to use the template for the future paper? I hope, but maybe not. But you will read and scan the articles with the template in mind. That you probably will do. And on reflecting on this talk, you probably realize you understand now critical thinking, which is breaking the thing down and analyzing the various supporting elements. So if you realize that, you'll appreciate your advantage over students in your class. And you'll have developed a healthy skepticism about how to go about stuff and how, how you're being taught. And in effect, you will have lost your intellectual virginity. Because now you know what critical thinking is. If this is helpful, you ought to tell your other friends in your other classes and in the various colleges, um, you're battling the geeks. They're everywhere. And the battle is endless. So I have pity on the incoming freshmen from your high school. But uh, in any event, good luck and success in your careers. This is certainly will, will likely be, will be a bit of help to you. So there you are. I can't I can say no more. <laughs>